the Application Lifecycle Risk Management Podcast, Episode 30, C-Sharp Properties, Getters and Setters. My son's learning programming. Last week, he asked me to explain getters and setters, and as it turns out, it looks like many others are asking for the same. So, I've decided to spend the time on this post explaining getters and setters in about as much detail as one can expect. So here it goes. So, a class has member variables that are typically scoped as private, although they could be, but shouldn't be, scoped as public. You would see those as private int underscore some member integer variable inside a class definition, but not in the methods. You'll also sometimes see this referred to as a field. I call them member variables because that's what I learned them as back when I was doing C++. Now, if the variable is in a method, it's called a local variable. Now, the reason we have member variables is because they hold the state of the object. For example, you might have a person class, typical example. The person class would have first name, last name, birth date as member variables so that when the class is created and becomes an object, they can hold the state of the person, Dave, Bush, and 620. In the old days, my C++ days, we could just make those member variables public so that any other class could access them directly. The problem with that is that any other class could also access them directly, leaving our class unable to control what exactly came into them. And so, some gatekeeping was added. In C++ and Java, that was done with setter methods and getter methods. In Java, that may have changed since the days when I programmed in Java, but they started that way at least. So, you might have a set first name, a set last name, and a set birthday method. And to retrieve them, you would have a get first name, a get last name, and a get birthday method. The getters and the setters are public, or protected, or private, as needed, but the member variables are always private, so that only the class they are declared in can access them. Inside the setter, we make sure the data is valid before we set the member variable, or possibly do some sort of computation before we store it, or even pass it on to some other location. But as far as anyone using the class is concerned, it is set, setting a value, and when it calls the getter, it retrieves the value, or something similar. Along comes C sharp, and that language says, having a getter method and a setter method is pretty dumb. We should syntactically stitch them together. And so they came up with properties. And the syntax for that is private data type property name and public data type property name with a get method and a set method kind of sort of thing inside of it, which is all declared inside of a class. The member variable doesn't have to be named the same as the property, but it often is. It's customary to name member variables with a leading underscore. Local variables start with a lowercase character. So properties and member variables are distinct, although you may have thought they were essentially the same thing, and they kind of act similar. At the end of the day, once they are compiled, properties are just methods, but syntactically, you access them as though they were variables. In fact, if you looked at a property in intermediate language, that's the language that all .NET code compiles to, you would see that it is just a method. To access a property from within your code, you would access it as some object dot first name equals Dave, or some variable equals some object dot first name. And the only reason they exist at all is to keep the outside world, that is outside the class, from stomping on the member variables of the class directly. The compiler does for us what the old timers did and the Java guys still do using get method and set method. So, as it turns out, we need all that gatekeeping. But the fact of the matter is, many times we don't. When I was teaching, I'd have guys say, if I don't need the gatekeeper, then why even bother with the properties? Which is kind of a valid point. But I always countered, but what if you eventually do? I think Microsoft must have heard that because they've embellished the language since 
so that we don't have to declare the member variable if all we're going to do is just pass the data on through to it. And that syntax is public data type property name, curly brace get, semicolon, set, semicolon, and curly brace. And the compiler generates the member variable for you. So if I wanted to actually do something with the member variable, you would need to declare the member variable. It really depends on what you're going to do with it. If you just wanted to retrieve the data at some other point in your application, you'd just use the property. But if you needed to manipulate the data as it was being set or retrieved, you'd have to use the original syntax. And that's properties up until today. Don't forget to rate this show in iTunes and Stitcher. What's Stitcher? Stitcher is an award-winning free app that lets you listen to all your favorite shows, plus discover from 20,000 news, entertainment, and sports shows. Create custom playlists. Available on the iOS, Android, and Nook. No downloading, no syncing, no wasted memory. Don't have Stitcher? Download it free today at stitcher.com or in the App Store. And for the links to items mentioned in this podcast, make sure you check out my blog at blog.dmbcllc.com. A link to this article is in the show description.